So, two of our previous video, the first one we talk about the classification of living organisms into kingdom. And the second one also, recently we talk about the kingdom monera. We say they are unicellular, simplest and seamless microscopic living organisms, mostly bacteria. And in today's video, we will talk about the kingdom protista. So without being said, let's just continue. So the next chapter we're going to talk about is Protista, Kingdom Protista. They are single cell or unicellular organisms. They are much larger than Moneras, more than 100 times or 10 to 100 times. They have a true nucleus, which means they are eukaryotic organisms. They may be either motile or non-motile by use of flagella, cilia, and etc. Mostly are aquatic found in ponds, river, sea, moist place. Kingdom Protista divided into two, protopyta and protozoa. Pylum protopyta, some protista are plants like pro because contain cellular soil. They are plant like that is protopyta. They are photosynthetic organisms, have an organelle called chloroplasm, which contain chloroplyl, which enable them to make their own food. Example is clamodominans, cholera found in fresh water and diatoms found in both fresh water and sea containing hard silica coats. Phylum protozoa. Phylum protozoa. Some protista are animal-like because they lack of cellular cell wall. So they are protozoa that resemble animal. Lack of photosynthesis. So they can manufacture their own put. No chloroplasm, which means cannot manufacture their own put. They are ready-made. Example of protozoa are amoeba and Pramision. So, as you can see here, as we go down, the complex is increasing. Let me see, the kingdom is increasing more complexity. We talk about Monera, which are larger, unicellular, prokaryotic. Now we are going to talk about Protista. And this Protista has some similarities between, like, plants and animals. They are considered as a borderline between plants and animals. But we are going to talk about it right now. Other pictures of Protista. Um, some protista, for example, Iglina bividis, bididis, is a protista that has a both plant-like and animal-like feature. Number one, it has a chloroply which enables them to make its own food, but it lacks cellular cell wall, but have a plasma membrane called pellico, 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 that's it. And as you can see here, so Iglina, we can see, is a borderline between plants and animal because it exhibits both characteristics of animal and also it exhibits characteristics of living organisms, that is, plants. Let me see, it exhibits both characteristics of plants and animals. They are connected limb or borderline. It's different on how you want to call it. So you have to remember it. Igluna is a protista which has a chloroply with enabling to make it can make its own food, but it doesn't have a lack, it doesn't have a solar cell wall. So it can make its own food by use of chloroply, but batada, it doesn't have solar cell wall. And they have it has a cell membrane, of course, or cell plasma membrane that is called pelico. Pelico. How do you get it? Other reproductive features of protista. First, they reproduce asexually by the body in the two dorsal cell. A reproductive feature of some protista, as you can see here, they can be a binary fishing, and also they reproduce sexually, which means producing male and female gamete with spews to form zygote. As you can see here, the zygotes undergo a special type of cell division called meiosis. That is meiosis. We will talk about it later. And the meiosis later become spore, which develop into new organisms. And as you can see here, so here are the main features of protista. You need to understand it. The borderline between plants and animal is Wigelena. And we are going to talk about classification of protista based on motility and locomotion. We will talk about it right now. And as you can see here, we have class 1 up to class 4. We, that is a protista, and that's organism example, and that's an organs of locomotion or motility. Number 1 is rhizopoda. They move by means, rhizopoda example, amoeba. They move, they move by means of pseudopodia, some of my pronunciations. Pseudopedia, pseudopedia, 
Hope you get it. So you proper pronunciation. And the class number two is Cilepora. The example of that organism is Palamison. They move by means of cilia. You have the take note of this one. The next one is Mastigophora. Example is Trichomonas. They move by means of flagella. And the fourth one, or the fourth class is Sporozoa. Sporozoa. They are plasmodium and they have no organ of movement, no organelle of movement. So, it may, questions may come into you in this table. So, I highly recommend that you have the tech note about this one. Most especially, cilia, primison, and plagella, pseudophodia. These organs of locomotion, you may encounter a question in your jam, and what about it? The question you will, they will ask you a question about this one. So we have to take note of this table classification of protista based on motility and locomotion. And also that point I want to talk about a spore. I mentioned a spore. It's a reproductive body consists of single cell or small group of cells which become peri of the feron organisms and grow into new organisms. It will form as a result of mitosis or meiosis and it will form as a result of mitosis or meiosis and it will germinate and reproduce when there is a favorable condition. A spore, it will only germinate when there is a favorable condition, as you can see here. So, we are going to talk about an overview structure of some protista. As you can see here, the first one is pylon protopyta. An example, as I say, is clamidominance. It's 10 micrometer wide. So, in the structure of clamidominance, there is a plagiolum, which is responsible for movement, let me say locomotion, there's a baku which is the help to store water, put waste product, let me say it helps to maintain the balance or water balance. And there's a nucleus that is control center of the cell. It tells the cell what to do and what to not to do. And there's a chloroplasm. By use of chloropy would help them to make to manufacture their own food. And there is pyrinoid. Pyrinoid, as you can see here, it also makes function on photosynthesis. It helps for piecing carbon into carbon hydrogen during photosynthesis and there is a cell wall like it's helpful for protection it also helps for to grow like it all and also it allow like h2o oxygen carbon dioxide to pass into the cell and there is a mitochondria the power host is used for respiration and also the source of energy and there is ear spot that is stigma ear spot is photosensory organelle which is perceive which perceive light level and direction okay that direction of light it will responsible for that and there is contra contracted buckles contracted bottle con contracted bottle is controlled intracellular water balance the water balance inside the cell is controlled that intracellular water balance by accumulating and ex and expelling excess water out of the cells to survive under hypotonic conditions so it, this is typical structure of clamidominance and we are going to the next step that is diatoms as you can see here this is structure of diatoms and um, the next under phylum protozoa that is amoeba this is protista with its animal like feature firstly it has pseudophods which is responsible for movement and locomotion there's a food buckle storage of food food particle outside as you can see here and there's a membrane or cell membrane and also there's a cytoplasm we explain about it. A nucleus control center and contractive buckle. It helps to maintain the internal water balance. And the next one we are going to talk about is paramecium. So, paramecium is another protozoan protista. It has firstly two cytoplasm, ecto and endo. Ecto is outside and endo is inside. Micronucleus, that is, has two nucleus. Micro, that is bigger, and micro, micro is smaller. And it has an oral groove. Oral groove, mouth like opening in a cilius, which serve as to guide food particle. Let me see, collected food particle, then transported to gullet, then into the food buckle for digesting. Then the next one is gullet. It's a vocal cavity, like a mouth cavity, where food is converted into food buckle. Then there is a cytosome. Cytostome is a special specialized organ for phagocytosis. Then we talk about we will talk about cytoprocts. Cytoproct is a food organ of extraction of indi indigestible waste products contained in the food buckle. Then there is a new new food buckle as you can see here. Then um, paramecium has at least four or three main buckle. The first one is anterior buckle, anterior contracted buckle. 
food buckle and also posterior contracted buckle. Contracted buckle is responsible to maintain the water balance inside the cell. So it has anterior and posterior, and that's a put buckle. As I say, put buckle is responsible, it's a place where digestion takes place after lysosome foods with the food bad go. Then there is a follicle, a cell membrane of paramecium. It has its own feature. There's a cilia which is responsible for attachment during a sexual reproduction. There is trichocyte. Trichocyte um, is organs of defense against predators. That is trichocyte, organs of defense against anything that will harm paramecium. Um, another example of protozoan protista is called trichonosome. Um, it has a nucleus control center of the cell. Um, there is a Golgi body that modifies all the proteins that come from nucleus through vesicle through um, rough endoplasmic reticulum. And there is endoplasmic reticulum. There is a lysosome which, which involves in pagotosis removal of those waste products or breaking down of those waste products. And there is a plagellum which is responsible for movement. And it has VSG, which is function VSG cut, which is function as selectively remove VSG specialized antibody from the cell surface is to remove that VSG specialized antibodies from the cell surface. And there is mitochondrium, which is responsible for respiration, the power host, let me see the source of energy, and also there is kinostoplasm. This is a special region of mitochondrium that have, let me see, that protect or hide the most complex or an unusual mitochondrial DNA found in nature. And also, there is another structure that is plagella pocket, I have mentioned it. And this is just a short description about the structure of trypanosome, from plagella pocket, Golgi bodies, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, plagellum, VSG cord, and mitochondrium, lysosome, endosome, and ketoplasm. Then we are going to talk about igluna. Igluna is the one that have both plant and animal like feature. As I said before, it's a borderline between plants and animal. Um, in the structure of Iglina, it has plagella, which is responsible for movement. Gullet. Gullet is a place where food is converted into food baku. And there is ear spot, which is responsible for perceived light and direction, light level and direction. And the reservoir is the storage of nutrient. It's the storage of all nutrient in the Iglina. And contractor baku, that is, we mentioned about it, and chloroplast that will help to manufacture their own food by use of chlorophyll and contractor fiber. Contractor fiber um, involved in during cell divisions. And also there is a nucleus, control center of the cells, nucleus that surround the nucleus and pellicle. Pellicle enables cells to have exceptional flexibility and contractility as they move. Let me say it controls what is going on and what is going out in the cell of Euglena. And the next step we are going to talk about is a life cycle of some protista. Example, amoeba and chlamydominance. The first one on that life cycle of amoeba, they undergo a sexual reproduction by reproduction of binary pigeon. Let me say by reproducing into two, that is binary pigeon, that is mitosis. They undergo mitosis by a sexual reproduction. While under chlamydominance, firstly, they reproduce asexually by mitosis and then produce spores. Then, then that spores, they will germinate and grow into the adult of chlamydominance. And they also reproduce asexual, sexually chlamydominance by fertilization, production of male and female garment after fertilization, then to form zygote, they undergo meiosis and repeat the process continuously. So what I want you to understand here, chlamydominance undergo a sexual by reproducing spore. Then the, it undergo sexual reproduction by producing of male and female gametes to form zygos, the process of meiosis, and then they reproduce new one and recirculation. Next kingdom, we're gonna talk about this kingdom Pongai. But this will be in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. 
do have a nice day don't forget to subscribe for more videos so see you next class bye